Sick of hot takes and terrible security advice? We've got the cure. The Anti-Siphon Antidote. Brought to you by Anti-Siphon Training at antisiphontraining.com. Today's prescription, Carrie Roberts, Adversary Emulation with Vector. Let's look at the easiest way to do attack emulation. There's a lot of ways to do attack emulation, but easy and free are on the top of the list of good ways to do it. And for this, we're going to use Vector. It's a free purple team reporting tool with built-in adversary emulation that you can create from the Atomic Red Team Library of Scripted Cyber Attacks. I have loaded up here Vector, which I've already installed. Vector is a free application that you can download and install in a few easy steps on Linux. So I have that. I'm logged into that here. Let's think of something to emulate an adversary. How about Raspberry Robin? Because that's a really cool name. And of course, Red Canary has a great report on it talking about the tactics and techniques used in the Raspberry Robin campaign. And it lays it all out here. It even has a section here that if you wanted to do testing, especially with Atomic Red Team, you could use some tests that are already built and part of the Atomic Red Team Library of scripted cyber attacks. So first we could emulate something that the Raspberry Robin campaign does, which is using a redirection to send contents of a CMD file to the command prompt using these options. So they have a link here to the atomic test. I already have that open here. So here's an atomic test in the library of scripted cyber attacks. And it says use command dash R with a specific file of commands. So we have that. It goes on and says we could emulate the use of the Microsoft application installer MSI exec downloading an installer file from the internet, which is a bit unusual, but something adversaries like to do. And we could do that with a command like this. And they also link here to an atomic test. This atomic test is called execute remote MSI file with MSI exec. And it explains it here and tells us how we can do this. The syntax here with the hashtag squiggly means we're supposed to substitute in one of these inputs up here. So MSI underscore EXE, we should put in this. So we're gonna use MSI EXE built into Windows to execute a payload, which this payload we're downloading from the Red Canary repository, just as an example installer, the a benign installer that we can use to emulate Raspberry Robin. And the report goes on to say we could also mimic their use of ODBC comp to execute an arbitrary DLL. So here we're using that executable and invoking a DLL file, another sample provided with Atomic Red Team. And lastly, we could launch a compiled HTML help file from a local file. So here we have a compiled HTML help file, and we're using Microsoft HH.exe, their HTML help displayer to load that file, which in turn is going to launch calc. So of course, calc isn't malicious, but it's emulating that behavior of launching an executable from the help executable built into Windows, another adversary tactic and technique. Great. We have four scripted cyber attacks we can use. Let's see how Vector can help us do that. So in Vector, we can build a new campaign. Let's call this Raspberry Robin. And we can search through our Atomic Red Team tests here. We want to find that CMD file one. So here it is, command prompt read contents from CMD file and execute. We want that one. We also want to execute remote MSI file. Right here, execute remote MSI file. We need to execute an arbitrary DLL using ODBC comp. So we got that one. And we also are going to use the compiled HTML file, HTML help. Let's search for that. Compiled HTML help remote payload. 
Raspberry Robin was using it with the local payload, so we'll do that and save that. Raspberry Robin campaign successfully created. Let's it's showing no progress, no outcome. So we want to run this. So we have progress. We've executed and emulated the attack, and then we can record our outcomes. So click on Raspberry Robin. We see for Raspberry Robin, we're doing two MITRE tactics, execution and defense evasion. Under execution, we're using commands from a .cmd file to execute. And under defense evasion, we're using these techniques, ODBC comp to execute an arbitrary DLL, MSI exec to execute and install a remote MSI file. And we're using a compiled HTML help file to launch an executable. We see each test case here. We can click on each of these test cases to view the details. So over here, the red team site's already filled out because that comes to us from Atomic Red Team. So this is the execute an arbitrary DLL. It says to emulate this, you should run this command, but it's got this hashtag squiggly syntax, which we know has to be replaced by a variable. We can see what that variable set to by clicking configure here. And the DLL payload variable is over here, and it's pointing to our Atomic Red Team library folder and to the DLL. This is actually a magic variable that needs to be placed, replaced with the actual path of our Atomic Red Team download. So I'm going to say Atomic Red Team Atomics here, where I have downloaded Atomic Red Team. And I'm going to save that. We'll review each of these. So MSI exec, the commands for that are shown here. Let's view the variables. We have for the MSI exe variable, we have it set to C Windows System 32 MSI exec. That's where it's found on Windows, so that works. And then for the MSI payload, we're just pointing to an MSI file on the Atomic Red Team GitHub repository. So we don't have to make any changes there. Let's look at sign binary proxy execution. This is the one where we're calling the HTML help executable on a local file. So we'll probably have to update that. Let's configure. And we see the local CHM file variable needs to have that filled in our path to atomics folder. Save that. And our last one. using command to read commands from a .cmd file, configure that and replace where we're gonna find that CMD file. Perfect, we got everything configured and actually you can change these Atomic Red Team templates to fix those variables. And so you don't have to do this every time you wanna emulate with these scripted cyber attacks. And then the magic happens. So we can go to our campaign action and build an automation runtime, which means it's going to build an executable for whatever platform these scripted cyber attacks for. Atomic Red Team has scripted cyber attacks, over 1,300 scripted cyber attacks that span Windows, Linux, Mac OS, cloud, and network. So these ones are for Windows. If they were for Linux or Mac, we could build a Linux or Mac. It would build a Linux or Mac executable. We're going to select all the tests to build them all into one executable. We could add in a delay here for a delay between tests and then build that. And here we have it downloaded as a zip file. We'll show in folder here. And we have Raspberry Robin. Let's extract that. And we have a single executable. It's going to run all of those commands exactly how they need to be ran. And we're going to see calculator pop up here. We're going to see the help file pop up here. So here's the help. Here's calculator. Another calculator. And now what wasn't there before is this JSON file. This is the log of everything just that just happened from the command line, the commands we entered and the command output. We go back into our purple team reporting tool here, 
And under campaign actions, we can import that entire log. Let's just drag that JSON file onto here. We'll select everything, submit that. And now we can view the attack logs. So here we have our ODB comp. We have our MSI exec. We have our HH and our read commands from the command line. We can go into each individual test case here. So here is reading commands from a .cmd file. We can view the logs just for that test here. View logs, and here we see the output here. Some of the other commands didn't have much in the way of output because they started up GUIs and stuff. But we can see everything that flashed on the screen during that test, and we have that all recorded here. So in terms of our purple team exercise and our reporting, we've got everything filled in on the red team details. We've got our start time. It records the start time and stop time of run running this attack emulation and the target it was run against. And then we can just fill in our blue team side. So maybe our, on our blue team side, we could say this was blocked by um, certain tools. Let's pick a couple tools. So we pick a couple tools here. We also have the option add in some notes, some tags, information about preventions and evidence of from the blue team side from this emulation. We saved that. So we've got everything completed because we ran the emulation. Now we've got this logged outcome logged as blocked. Let's go in here and make something up for the outcome of this one. Let's say it alerted with a medium alert with some particular tool. Save that. And the next one. We could say, well, we logged something centrally with a particular tool, but there were no alerts or blocks. And maybe this last one, there was no, no response on the blue team side. So we say none, save that. Now we've got everything recorded for our red and blue team sides. We can add some custom tags, but What's really cool is that once we have this entered in here, we can go to the reporting section. And here we have some quick reports for our success rate. We have one blocked, one alerted, one logged. We got details about that here. We have statistics by detection and prevention tool. So we had Falcon and Cisco in this made up example, blocking something. One thing we had Windows Defender blocking one, trend micro log something. Here we have statistics by tactic, MITRE tactic. So under defense evasion, we had one alerted, one logged, and one with nothing. And execution, we had one blocked. And then various other success rate reports. We can filter this down to one campaign like we have here or an entire set assessment. We could repeat this campaign every quarter. Maybe the first time we do it, we didn't do so well on our defensive side. The next quarter, we've made some improvements. We do better. And there's a great historical trending reports page here that will show us our campaign improvements over time. So it shows we didn't do so well the quarter one. We keep improving quarter after quarter, just running the same, same campaign. Of course, we already have this campaign set up. So it'd be super easy just to run that executable again. I ran the executable against the same machine that I'm browsing vector UI with, but we could take that executable to many different machines in our environment where we wanted to emulate the same thing and collect all those logs and bring it back into vector. Mind-blowing, free, awesome, easy. If you want to learn more about adversary emulation, check out my attack emulation tools course on anti-siphon train. The doctor says, Pop two shells before lunch, and don't forget to like and subscribe. If symptoms reoccur, check out these videos while you wait for the next anti-siphon antidote.